second time we are live what is up everybody my name is dat cloud seven heaven please just call me cloud this guy is hey guys it's your boy jd i'm everyone's boy including yours that's his that's name down it. there <laughs> um so guys this is our uh first podcast uh me and jd uh go way 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 back been playing games since the dawn of time the birth of man whenever we were birthed from this earth um, we've been playing games for a long time. Uh, so I'm a streamer. If you catch me live on my streams, typically Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, and then on the weekends, uh, I play a lot of mobile games, a lot of gotcha games, specifically Final Fantasy, Brave Exvius, and Epic Seven. Uh, but we also, I specifically dabble in any other Final Fantasy game, Final Fantasy 14. I'm doing a playthrough of Seven right now. A uh, huge weightlifter. I uh, have a lot of video game tattoos. A uh, huge Naruto weeaboo nerd. Um, so don't let looks fool you, okay? Because your boy strong and strike. That's a Naruto song. But uh, uh, JD, I'm taking up a lot of air time with this first introduction, man. Please tell us a little bit about you, bud. The people want to know um, about your boy. I'm a parasite. I just latch on to Troy. <laughs> Anytime he puts a video up, I'm like, hey, man, don't forget about me. I'm joking. No, but uh, yeah, I play games too. Um, we met based off of playing games, really, when we were kids. And never since then, we sort of, <clears throat> I wouldn't say we split up, but, you know, I had a focus, you had a focus. We sort of taught each other things. I didn't play RPGs as much until you, and um, I don't think you would have played as many fighting games. I, I don't think. No. I never would have but, known Final Fantasy Tactics, Devil May Cry. You really started my Devil May Cry, like... <laughs> fantasy i never would have played dmc like who's this who's this nerd with this dumb sword holding it like if it wasn't for me white hair and broken families i'll tell you right now if i play default character has to have white hair if i <laughs> any in-game fallout 76 fallout 4 all the way over to my little pony's dream world i will have a character with white hair right eh, don't test cast. me uh no yeah we've been dude I, it, it's it's funny to think of it that way that you we both got each other into different genres because my first game was Final Fantasy 4 that I can remember because like everyone says Super Mario or Super Mario World Street Fighter 2 Guile's theme goes with everything all I heard was Ultra Combo and Killer Instinct it's all yeah Tooth and Claw always through it all there's a lot of inside jokes so me and JD have known each other for a long time so there's going to be a lot of quips a lot of conversations that we have uh, a lot of into windows that we tell each other, but um, but like I said, man, it's crazy to look back uh, and think that we both vibed off each other. We used to play, uh, we still do it to this day, very rarely, but we we love games and each other so much. I'm saying it that we played Final Fantasy X at two different locations at the same time, but like, hey, where are you at? Oh, I, I'm on the first boss. What level are you at? Oh, I just leveled up. I'm going to level up this sphere. Don't do that yet. Not till I do it. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm waiting. So we would, we would sit on the phone for hours and just wait for the other person to, to meet up, to catch up to the part. Um, Dead so silent. Just like... <laughs> <laughs> um, and this, I mean, it goes back to... I mean, we skateboarded with each other, too. We lived in the same apartment, went to the same school, same high school. Blood couldn't make us any closer. Um, JD got into streaming way before I did. Uh, and was making YouTube contents way before I did. Um, uh, he was with a couple different groups. Uh, kind of was a nomad. Went to went to a few different places. And uh, always stayed with the video games though. So it's nice to see him back uh, in, in fine form and on camera. He's got a breadth of knowledge. Um, I think we're pretty diverse when it comes to these uh, conversations. Uh, we share similar interests but different outlooks. Uh, JD's in, in very intelligent when it comes to speaking eloquently and uh, yeah. knowing backstory like i could not tell you a thing about metal gear and this guy could tell you literally every game i'll so. show you what i got yeah. <laughs> all i know is there's a dude named deep throat all right so um that being said uh this is very guerrilla style um we're this is how we normally just chit chat with each other uh but this time we're in front of a camera understand that i do realize that jd's camera kind of stops and goes uh we are completely taking everything off of my computer um so that's something that we got to look into but everything's being recorded for me so that's why i look clean that's why my frame rate's good uh jd has a superior rig to me according to him so he ensures me everything's fine on his side so clearly it's my fault 
Um, <laughs> so anyway, um, these podcasts each week we'll do something differently. We'll chit chat about something, uh, something for that week. Uh, so to get it started, JD, what have you been playing, man? Man, everything under the sun. <laughs> no. Uh, I wish I've been. <laughs> uh, what did I do? So I haven't done New Game Plus like you, obviously. On Sekiro. Sekiro, yeah. Uh, I've been taking my time on Division. I'm waiting on one of my buddies from a previous YouTube venture to uh, have availability to play. But other than that, I've, I've actually Steam had a pretty interesting sale <laughs> that okay. I've been taking advantage of. They got a Sniper Elite. 80% off. Uh, which he just gifted to me, so... <laughs> hint, hint. I am the fucking sniper wolf, man. I have the I, best I, I have the best eyesight out of everybody, <laughs> okay? Why are you both looking at me like that? <laughs> but uh, that Splinter Cell, uh, mainly Blacklist, and then... Um, I saw uh, you playing Div Division 2, right? Yeah, no, I, I... So I have two different characters on Division. Um, I have the solo, Wait, and then I have the enough. Enough. Yeah, so so I, I uh, role played my uh, my separate division character. He's a retired sergeant major. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking backstory. He's out. He's been out of the game too long. They drag him back in. <laughs> he wears what, a cowboy what, hat. Hold on, hold on. Why did he leave the first time? It, hey man, he had to retire. He was over thirty years at that point. <laughs> Get on out of here! And he's like, I can still fight. <laughs> he's like the Harrison Ford of Sergeant Majors. And then he got out. They brought him back in because the division nonsense. So he has a cowboy hat because he was hunting the first time they they dragged him back in. And he's like, DC's a mess. And he's like trying to he's trying to make America great again. So that's his thing. <laughs> let's get all these hooligans out here. <laughs> so I specifically have him using. Uh, like hunter oriented gear so he'll have like a, a rifle uh, which is like the dmr and then he has a sniper rifle or he'll have like a, a six round revolver he doesn't have anything that's like an lmg or you know assault rifle or anything. he's a cqc close quarters quick guy <laughs> he's, he's pretty much yeah he's a he's a great guy uh speaking of so, metal gear is he the big boss no he's <laughs> <laughs> so, <pretty sick. laughs> but, oh, man. Uh, old enough to keep spinning those uh those things he's got a revolver for real so it works out but uh that's mainly it what about you um so uh sticking with the final fantasy 7 um just picked that up for the xbox one i'm a huge achievement whore uh it's died down recently uh i'm one of the guys Fire. that <laughs> i'm one of the guys or one of the people the uh, I'm one of the people that got Avatar from Blockbuster when that was a thing, and I thousand that game in two minutes and took it back and said the disc didn't work or something to that effect because um, I wanted the achievement points. So NBD, don't know how much I have, but it's more than you. So um, uh, I will always – yeah, weird flex, but okay kind of thing. Uh, Final Fantasy VII playing that. I just got past Cloud uh, Drag, so I'm super excited to see Cloud uh, cross-dress in HD in the remake whenever you know TM that comes out. Um, so Sekiro, uh, Sekiro, the correct pronunciation eludes me. Uh, I am on my new game plus, um, um, there's so many different avenues you could go in that game. Uh, so it's hard to say where I'm at, but I'm almost halfway done with it again. Uh, I'm looking to get all the achievements in that game and then probably sit that down until some DLC comes out for that. Um, and then I, I've been penciling in Final Fantasy 14, which JD has been holding my hand. Uh, we played it way, way, way back in the day, uh, but I'm recently getting back into it because I used to have Gamefly, um, and I just it, it was tough for me to play all the games uh, every three, four weeks, send it back, three, four weeks, send it back, but then keep consistent with streaming. Um, aside from that, the occasional free game of the month, uh, I was playing Dead Cells for quite some time, I was playing that for a long um, but that's it, really, man. The, like, The Division 2. Um, I'm trying to think of another game that just came out that everyone's played. Uh, I can't think of another AAA title. But a lot of the new games I haven't played, uh, not the AAA ones. Uh, I've been sticking to the Shadows. Shadows Die Twice. Good pun. Fucking A, man. Um, but that's it. So aside from uh, what I've been playing, uh, so typically... Uh, I know JD doesn't uh, play gotcha games. He's seen me play gotcha games before. Um, that's another thing that we'll, we'll chit chat during these podcasts is uh, a big base, a big user base that watches me on Twitch live uh, and on YouTube follows my 
streaming sessions and my pool sessions for my gacha games. So typically, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, uh, that's my number one game that I've been playing. Uh, I've been dabbling in Epic Seven. I streamed that a few times, uh, but refocus more on Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, which uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exvius has had a great week. Um, we just got Crimson, who's a character that not too many people care about. Um, is it Crimson with a K? It's Crimson with a C. You Not everyone oh, is yeah. like me and it has a cool nickname, moniker, with, where you switch a letter. Um, hey man, Mortal Crimson's Mortal Kombat's cool, though. He, does, he wears a hood. After he wins his fight, he puts on a hood, which is cool. There's also a character that's a four-star base who already wears the hood. You know, whatever. Um, uh, good week, though. We had a free... Uh, we had a battle trial. The uh, Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions, actually. So we had Ultima come out as, uh, as well as Beowulf. Uh, so they're both five star bases. Tough to get. I got both. No big deal. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, uh, but we had a uh, a new fight this week. It was a trial uh, for a timent. I always pronounce it wrong. Ma- JD. Yeah, the dra- three headed dragon. Yeah, from tac- from tactics. I don't know. If it's, I don't know. If, well, he's from more than that. He's in. Yeah, he's, he's in a bunch of Final Fantasy games. Yeah, you're right. I don't, I, I don't remember him from from tactics more than i do from i think like seven or so or in ta- so tactics uh <laughs> war of the lines i mean in general you remember uh, i'm gonna pronounce it wrong rice race r-e-i-s uh, the dragon girl it wasn't r-h-y-s i don't know if there's a translation thing like eris i don't know but anyway, in, any, in any case um there's a new we had a trial that came out that was stupid easy like the stupidest trial we've ever had um i say stupid it's really it's just super simple you could beat it with characters that were unleveled with high level weapon gear on them it's bad dude like uh, people are posting videos about how easy it is uh or like the characters they use to beat it which in itself it was it's a challenge easy. Yeah, yeah it's like that was hard um uh, we don't know who's coming out next week. Uh, Axstar got pushed back a month, uh, exactly. which is a huge deal. Axstar, uh, JD, is... Uh, so, in the game, we have different characters that bring the meta up, right? That spike it. Like, every character comes out, it's like a lull. Like, oh, uh, Crimson, uh, Ultima, Ser- High, uh, High Ultima Seraph, if I'm remembering it correctly. Uh, Beowulf. They don't spike the meta or the tier. Mm-hmm. They just, you know, hey, it's a really strong character. Uh we're gonna get this one armed dude named Axstar. When he, <laughs> after he comes out, the meta spikes. He be, like characters below him. You people literally save their in-game currency because this guy's so good. If you have him, content's easier. Um, uh, I've been yeah. FFB has been great recently, man. For like the past month, they reswitched a whole bunch of things for Arena. Um, they uh, and all these uh, step up banners that we're having. Uh, our lapis value up the ass. The bundles are trash, uh, but that's here to say uh, everyone's different. I'm not a whale by any means. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of a uh, and uh, crimson. It's good. It's good, man. It's good. It's been a good week. And uh, Epic Seven so, has not been a good week for me. Uh, I've not question. been having. I've not been having oh. fun with Epic Seven. The Ultima High Seraph. Yep. Is that like the? Because I'm pretty sure we fight it. Um, is that like, is she floating on something? Yep, yeah, she's floating on air. On the, the, not uh, not like on the Nimbus, like Goku would be. But yeah, yeah, the same one that you fight on, I don't want to spoil it, but the ghost ship is the best thing I can, if you can aesthetically remember the area. Cause, okay, because it's a boss on 14. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, see, I'm not there yet. Yeah, and I'm yeah. there. And we'll definitely chat about 14 today. We got a little bit. But... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the Gotcha game has been going great. Um, uh, again, for this podcast, anytime we talk about something below in the comments, please ask us questions, uh, things that you want to bring up next time, but, uh, it's been going good. So hopefully next week we get a good character. I know Aerith and Red 13 are supposedly supposed to come out soonish. Cause like I said, we're not going to get Axstar for another three, four weeks, which is until next month. Um, trying to think what else for, uh, mobile, like I said, Epic seven has not been good to me. Uh, we got a Saria, the new banner that came out for her. She's an old character. Um, I'm really struggling in that game. I'm, I'm happy with where I'm at, uh, but I'm struggling to progress in more content. Um, Have uh, you been playing anything else? Uh, no, no. Uh, I still play uh, Naruto Blazing Ninja. I play that super casually. Typically, I log in. <laughs> yeah, dude. I log in. Right, Kakashi Senpai! <laughs> Uh, typically I log in, I get, I get the, get the pro look, man, look for anyone that's never seen it before. That's the motherfucking Sharingan. Oh. Yeah, can I help you with the rolls, man? <laughs> <laughs> Just my pulls. <laughs> look, man, 
If you've never seen a pool session, there is a video. My, I just punched the shit out of the mic. There's a video of me of me and JD. Multiple. I think there's two videos on YouTube oh, where God. JD's helped me summon. A, he dressed up as Naruto, and I dressed up as Kakashi. I'm telling you right now, they are the funniest videos on the internet. I second to none, come get some kind of thing. You know what I mean? Um, that shit was constricting. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, JD's got some wild luck, man. You had some wild luck in Dissidia, which I don't. Unfortunately, I don't play anymore, but. You had some crazy luck in the city. You got me trash in FFBE, so <laughs> shout out to JD. <laughs> it was so fun. It's so funny watching someone who doesn't know anything about FFBE because he would summon for me and look at me and go, did I do good? <laughs> Dude, I'm like that parent that plays Mortal Kombat. I'm like, is this the fatality? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Garbage. Um, so... Uh, that's the, that, but that's all I really have for the uh, for the mobile games uh, side of things. So um, hopefully, hopefully this week we get something good. Uh, I'm sure it's going to be a uh, it's got to be a King Mog event. Which shout out to my people that know what a King Mog event is. It's got to be King Mog event or another raid. But uh, in any case, so me and JD, um, something that we have been playing for a long time. Uh, years, it feels like. Good old classic. Good old, just a just a PS4 classic. I'm not the biggest fan of PlayStation right now, but we'll get into that. Um, but it's Bloodborne, a From Software game that uh, follows the same path of the Soulsborne series, uh, which you might heard you might have heard that term before if you've never played it. The Soulsborne, which is the Dark Souls series from From Software. Um, so a great series. I have a tattoo of it on my calf. Uh, a beloved series that we love. Uh, I honestly, JD, uh, did you get me into Dark Souls, or did we get into it at the same time? Uh, I played Demon Souls, so I did not. Yep. Yeah, I I got Demon Souls. Actually, got gifted Demon Souls on a whim uh, by Taco, another friend of mine. Um, he was just like, "Hey, man, here you go," and I got it, and I was like, it's "Not his best friend, is it?" <laughs> I was like, why the fuck did you curse me, dog? I started playing it, and I was just like, wow, why do I keep dying? And then, like, but <laughs> what the fuck? Like, offended, like, my soul and shit. Do but, I suck? <laughs> but, so, I remember I kept playing that game. I'm a stubborn, uh, well, person, but also a stubborn gamer. Like, I don't like to let the game win. You know, the terrorists <laughs> will win. If <laughs> I negotiate go with terrorists. <laughs> If I go to quit, so I'm like, uh uh, ain't gonna happen, right? Not in here. Mm -mm. So I toughed it out on that game, and then I think when Dark Souls was coming out, um, those are some of my, I still have them favorited, actually. Some of my favorite uh, trailers to watch, because they had the, the silent comedy, Bartholomew's uh, song. Mm -hmm. um, Whenever you can, look at the launch trailer. It's, like, it's just a minute, but it was just like, it set me up. I really feel like Demon's Souls slipped right past me, because I didn't hear about it. So now that I'm remembering, <laughs> I played, yeah, I played Demon's Souls on your PlayStation 3. Um, it's, not, it's not the uh, definitive Souls game. I can oh, say yeah, yeah. Um, just oof. Uh, I just remember that the first boss fight that I got to was that slug that was made of all the spears, right? I, I can't, I can never say the name right. It's based off the Roman defensive strategy, uh, Phalanx, uh, Phalanx. Bless you. What's the boss's Phal name? Phalanx. Phalanx. Uh, P-H-A-L-A-N-X, I believe. Phalanx. I can't say it, though. I, if I try to, anyway, I'm not. It's you, a slug that you pretty much job, have bud. to use fire on the entirety. Oh, um, it's a slug you have to use fire on. So we've been, me and JD, been playing uh, Bloodborne uh, for a long time. We have both completed the game, New Game Plus, probably once or twice, uh, uh, multiple times between the both of us. Um, so we've decided it's been a while in the making. Me and JD have been, you know, like we talked about in the beginning of the uh, of the video, we chatted about um, we synchronized on Final Fantasy X and multiple games, not just that one, Tactics included. Uh, but we've always talked about, hey, let's let, let's reimagine, let's play through these games, these beloved games that we love. Uh, double word, beloved love. Um, you'll come to understand my English sucks. So um, coming through, we're like, all right, well, let's replay Bloodborne. Let's do a milk toast run through. So um, on Fridays at 8 p.m. Typically, uh, make sure to you know follow uh, follow me on Twitter. What, what time? Uh, so 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, PST. Um, so follow the Twitch name below uh, uh, to know when I'm going to go live when we're going to play. It's typically Fridays at 8 p.m. Uh, it differs, though, um, based on our schedules. Uh, we can't, we're can't. we not full-time streamers or YouTubers by any means. 
Uh, so it, we try to play as much as we can uh, between each other. But um, So we're doing a Milk Toast playthrough where I want Ludwig's Holy Blade, which is my number one used sword. I If you want to see a boss get fucking critted, then come check your boy out. I have no dodging skills. I don't use Quicksilver. <laughs> my Quicksilver inventory is massive. And that's because I don't need Quicksilver or to counter when I crush the boss's femur. Okay? Um, so I will. So the Milk Toast, the base level stat for strength, I believe, is 11 or 12, JD? Uh, I believe it's 12. So I need 16 or 18. It's one of the two. So I will only. I will. Okay, 18. So I will only level up six times for my strength. I won't level up stamina, health, blood singe, arcane, no defense. Um, you might need to put one in dex. I could be or okay. Skill. Yeah, yeah. I could be wrong. But, but yeah, what, the the point of the point of the playthrough is personally, I'm only gonna get enough to equip the bare minimum to equip my weapon, and then uh, utilize the trick weapon style for whatever I need to based on my stamina. Because I, I I think <laughs> equipping the sword, my stamina is gonna drop to zero. But that doesn't You've never used it. And Outside. then, JD, what about you? So I'm doing the Ludwig, I'm doing Ludwig's Holy Blade, and what are you going to be doing? Uh, uh, I'm using the stake, uh, stake driver mm -hmm. right now. I'm using that I, Kirk hammer. I'm not saying I don't know if I like it, man. I feel like I should be doing some old hunters uh, weapons because there's some good old hunters weapons, like the heavy whip. You know what I'm talking about? Yep the heavier one uh, i actually did use a lot on our actual playthroughs um i don't remember the stats on it though the the what was the other one the spin uh the world the pinwheel world saw or whatever oh yeah yep, yep. is good weapon and it does stagger but i don't know man and i can't do chicago anymore it sucks yeah because you yeah. need to have blood tension. it does so is there a minimum requirements to get to the old hunters dlc is it 60 or is it like you unlock no. it immediately, like since we got the yep. bell. So for, for for anyone that hasn't that did not tune into the first stream, uh, we got. Uh, so how it's gonna play? Uh, you can use a large resonating bell to a small one. Whoever uses the large bell is the host, and then the small bell enters that host game. So we got to the Blood Star Beast. Uh, JD did the big bell. Big bell played little bell. I jumped into his game, and we beat the Blood Star Beast. Uh, that goes my phone. Uh, we beat the Blood Star Beast, um, and then after we beat it, we jumped onto mine, and then we got easy clap because of poison. Because we we're not leveling anything up. The only thing we're doing is we could change your equipment uh, with the gear, and there's no gear required. You don't need strength. So, and typically in Dark Souls fashion, you need certain minimum uh, strength or endurance to be able to, or even mine for that matter, to equip spells or anything. In this game, equipment is base level. It just changes your uh, your your poise damage, your your defense, your roll, yeah. So it's um. So in any case, like I said, we're at the. So for anyone that missed it, me and JD got to JD. We beat Bloodstar Beast on JD's, and none. Uh, we're at Bloodstar Beast on mine. So, um, uh, but like I said, so you think honestly, we, that was my bad on that one because I got. I, I was thinking I, think I was it was still the playing fucking the poison that killed me, but whatever. Yeah, but I should have like no, I died first. Remember? I know, I but slow. It's not called. Okay, listen. I am not. I am not a complainer on stream from software. <laughs> it is not slow poison. That shit killed me quick. <laughs> it call it quick cool. poison. Call it what it is. Yeah, man. No resistances. We can't do anything about it. I know, can't, man. You gotta take the L much quicker. Don't have a health pool. That's the worst thing about joining into the game. People are gonna be telling you like, "Oh, it's easy because you got two people." If I take two hits, I'm dead. Yeah, yeah. The difficulty that doesn't change. Yeah. For anyone that hasn't played in the Soulsborne series, when you enter a host game, it not so not only is my health minimized, but the boss's health is increased and damage is increased. So it's not like the boss stays the same. The the boss doubles up, knowing that you're gonna get doubled up, and it's hard to bounce back and forth between the two because we're both playing Sekiro. Um, so plenty of times I pressed L1, thinking <laughs> I'm gonna counter him, death blow this motherfucker right here. Nope, I died. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> and then I'm quick silver bullets. Like, no! <laughs> I, I the the yeah the countering in Bloodborne is 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 much more premeditated than Sekiro. And Sekiro, I will butterfly dance. Uh, my way into defeating a boss permanently. Is that a guns reference? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> guns the duel. No, no, no. It was uh, uh, I. It was on one Reddit post uh, that I read because I was 
just having some difficulties uh, after New Game Plus, and I was like, well, I can finally start learning more about the game. So Butterfly Dance is kind of like tapping L1. You always stay blocking, but it leaves that window of opportunity of a counter to stay there because you're in a the full time that you're you press L1, you're automatically blocking. Um, um, so hopefully, hopefully the playthrough stays the way that it has been consistent. Because I love the Bloodborne series. Bloodborne has been an amazing, amazing game. I not that I'm disappointed with Sekiro, but I really was hoping that uh, Shadows Die Twice when it got first announced that it was Bloodborne Two. Because yeah. in Bloodborne, they take away so Dark Souls. You have a shield that you parry, or you can dodge. You can make different builds. Bloodborne's like, all right, fuck it. We're gonna make it a little bit more aggressive. So your character, when you get hit, you can gain some of your health back by attacking the enemy. So the game is giving you the opportunity and uh, g rewarding you for being uh, physical. Aggressive. Yeah, thank you. Better word. Aggressive. Uh, Sekiro, again, falls into that other pattern of, okay, you got to be aggressive, but that's we're, we're into poise now. But specifically with Bloodborne, it follows this whole blood story. It follows this whole... Uh, the thing about Soulsborne games, which JD can speak to it better because I have to watch YouTube videos to figure out the storyline, but um, Bloodborne had such a deep storyline, you pick up an item and you read it and you're like, oh, I don't understand this. Oh, it talks about the healing church. Oh, wait, I fought this guy who was from that church who was scared of fire, but then this weapon does this. Oh, who's Ludwig? Oh, it's this guy. Okay, now the you learn about Ludwig before the old hunters dlc comes out and now you know more about it now you more now you know more about the character after a, a few seconds of line so um uh the replaying through bloodborne's great uh it, it's it's such a good world too cuz like i said sekiro is very specific and you know you kill a boss you're onto a sub boss cuz you want to explore a little bit more but bloodborne allows you to experience this like What's the term? What's the uh, Victor uh, world building? Uh, uh, Victorian era. Yeah, the Victorian era of like ghouls, statues, cater. You know, good day, sir. It's, JD, how the, are um, you? It's the uh... fuck. I can't think of it. It's the type of horror, cosmic horror, but it's it's coined by I can't think of his name. The the author. Oh um oh my Lanta um, not oh, come on. We got this. That's what Google's for. Uh, no, no, Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yeah, Lovecraftian yes, yes. horror. So that cosmic sort of horror, the occult. Oh, sort man, of thing. so good. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's, there's one. Well, I think one of the most breathtaking parts of that game was uh, right before you fight Rom, which is uh, you have to. So Dark Souls has always had this thing where if you jump over a platform and it's endless or it's dark, you're going to die. This game literally sets you up to do just that thing. But you're rewarded for it. Like it's part of the story. I can't say you're rewarded, but like yeah, it's I'm it's an <laughs> it's unnerving and it's uneasy because you're like uh, it's a, quite literally a leap of faith, and then it turns out to be a boss fight, and it's fucking visually that game is amazing. So that's I'm really I'm really happy for the uh, for the tattoo I have. Um, uh, but what's your so aside from the lore and aside from the visuals, is there? I mean, what else do you love about the game, JD? Well, I mean. I'm a sucker for that stuff. You know I love Castlevania. And Castlevania has borderline that sort of uh, Victorian stuff. Not entirely, but I mean, well, it depends on which one you play. Um, some of them really have that sort of feel to it. Mm -hmm. So I've always been a fan of that. Um, moving into that sort of game type, the other cool thing about it is the trick weapons. You can absolutely oh, tell every one of the trick weapons have been thought out. They're not something stupid like... <clears throat> when you actually look at the burial blade, which is the scythe in the game, um, when you trick it and it's just uh, uh, pretty much a scimitar, uh, it's just straightforward. It's like, oh, well, it's a curved blade. And then when you actually trick it, he slams it into the post, which is folded on your back, slams it into it, and then flips it around, and it folds out for you. And then when he's done with it, he flips it and breaks it. And then he puts it on his back. It's like so creative. Yeah. Things. It's so simple. Uh, you think that, it, it, like, why hasn't that been done before? You know, name another game that you can s uh, seamlessly attack with one weapon, press it, and then, like, something on your back. Such a, the casing, the Kirk Hammer is literally a short sword with a huge center block on your back. You L1 it. He it takes it off his back with one hand, slams it. So that does the damage, throws the sword into it, which does push damage, and then rips it up 
to do more damage. So, I mean, it's like, oh, man. Oh, it's such a good game. Like, if you have never it's played inventive. it... It's yeah, it's creative, it's inventive, it's very bloody, very gory, but that's the premise of the game. And again, again, I can't, we can't speak enough positive things about the Soulsborne series because it's the story. You can play the game and not know the story at all. You have to pay attention to the the surroundings, the very, very specific words and phrasing that the characters in game tell you, and especially a simple item such as a pile of dung might have a description on it that tells you about something. Um, yeah. So no, that's the other thing too, just real quick about yeah. the lore. Is while none of the lore is gonna make sense to you, it's probably the easiest Souls game lore wise to get into because Dark Souls yeah, one, two, true, and three true. all fall yeah. into the well it's an alternate timeline kind of thing. Like they have a cop out. Meanwhile, Bloodborne is this all happens in one night. Yeah, stuff yeah very true, you. very true. One night there's no crazy time <laughs> thing. There's the past, there's people's uh, motivations. And there's where you're at right now. There's the level of the occult with the you know Lovecraftian stuff, but outside of that, it doesn't venture into this. Well, in an alternate timeline, you do this. Yeah. No, not at all. The craziest, what craziest you get is being in a dream. That's it. Which is easier to digest than hey, why did this guy do this, but he didn't do it on the last one? Yeah. Time is not always consistent, and it's just like ah, fucking. Not even like good storytelling. That's pretty much the. Ironically, it was all a dream, sort of. <laughs> it was all a dream. <laughs> oh, you said play Bloodborne, you see. Exactly. So, no, great game though. If you haven't played it, play it. Yeah, I, it's funny because we get. I mean, we could talk about that game because we haven't talked about Chalice Dungeons. We haven't talked about any of the bosses. You haven't talked about secret bosses. Yeah. Like yeah, like Thank you, you. <laughs> we barely mentioned the DLC. <coughs> um. So another game that me and JD play. JD has way more experience on this, but for all my Final Fantasy XIV fans out there, um, so JD got me back into it recently. Um, I uh, what like I would say four weeks ago I unlocked Ninja, uh, which yeah. is the class that I want to main personally. Um, JD told me that it's a support class, uh, which I'm a huge fan of. Utility. <laughs> Util there, Utility. Better better term. Um, so <laughs> typically we play that on Sundays at ten o'clock. Uh, JD's uh, JD plays it throughout the throughout the week, uh, and I want I definitely want to get back into doing that a bit more. Um, but uh, Shadowbringers is coming out. Uh, I haven't I have not reserved it yet, which I should as a rookie because you get all that cool in game stuff for it. Um, uh, I, I don't think I, I don't think immediately I'm gonna jump to. Is it called Gunbreaker, JD? Uh, yeah, Gunbreaker. I don't think I'm gonna jump directly to that because I really want to focus on the ninja class. I don't know if my background, the tattoo on my fucking elbow, or Kakashi Senpai gives up enough indication of how much I want to be a fucking shinobi. But um, as cool as, oh, look at this. I by the way, I have a small scar here. That's kind. Of, oh it's God. it's not as big as Squall's, <laughs> but I mean Squall's isn't as cool as mine. I got it the same way though, so it's like I would. Okay, all right. Let me. Uh, anyway, we're, we're going fucking phone dropped again. I'm not putting you up anymore. Um. <clears throat> So anyway, Sundays we play it. Uh, JD is holding my hand. I have very little knowledge, as much as JD does. So, uh, but for this kind of portion, JD, so uh, can you talk to us a bit more about uh, Shadowbringers? Uh, anything you find interesting coming up recently? It's coming out. Do you know when? That's what I was actually going to look up. But let's see. Uh, shit, because I haven't pre-ordered it either. See, that, it's um, and I, I think that's a, I think that's bad on us because I. I I'm definitely going to play it. Uh, I, I want to invest way more time into the Final Fantasy XIV streams. Right. Because uh, it's fun. It's uh, The biggest thing when I stream is I want it to be interactive. Uh, so and I played it's... the shit out of Final Fantasy XI. And Final Fantasy XI was so much more based on... Uh, like, I played, that on, yeah, I played that on PS2 with a, a USB keyboard and hollering at my link shell every goddamn morning like hey bo boys we're going to the dunes like what's going on so uh final fantasy 14 when it first came out it didn't strike me in the same way that 11 did but also i felt really burnt out after playing 11 because diablo 2 diablo diablo uh and final fantasy 11 i know that i know diablo is not an mmo but they're my most online played games you know what i mean like i didn't get into uh fantasy star online i didn't play wow um uh so Final Fantasy 14 when when Shadow when Shadowbringers comes out um I so I saw the trailer JD 
and I saw I don't know the main. I can't ca- talk anything about the trailer. It's gonna spoil. It. It's gonna spoil the story for you. What's the the but the the char- the samurai guy? Is he playing a more significant role because he's? So in, you're talking about he's the guy that's like fighting that sort of like the other guy. Yeah. Wait, what's the other guy? The blonde haired guy, the guy with the huge amount of armor on him. Because the samurai is you. The samurai is the warrior of light, so that's you. So, like, he, when he's changing his classes or his jobs, that's you. Mm, okay. So, all it's it's interesting because <clears throat> you don't really get to see that side too much. You see it partially. And, by the way, it drops on the 2nd of June. Um, Fucking next July, week. 2nd of July. 2nd of July. <laughs> second of July. But early, uh, early access begins on the 28th, which maybe a ruse. <laughs> I don't know if you should get do early access. Yeah, I don't want to, yeah. I don't even know. The, in in my previous experience, it has been a nightmare, um, especially with Stormblood. Uh, that game dropped, and they pigeonhole you into doing an instanced mission, and that mission would time people out. So you, you'd see a million people waiting at this one area, and they're like, yeah, run the mission! And then you go to run the mission, and then it goes, uh, cannot start instance dungeon. And you're just like, what the fuck? And then there's millions of people just piling up. There's nothing you could do. So I don't know if I'll take time off for it, to be honest. But, uh, <clears throat> anyway. Trailer. Yes. So, um, without getting into too much of the specifics, it's the climax of the end of Stormblood. And then... Uh, leading into the new sort of like threat in the past the end of a realm reborn led into heaven's ward which was about the war of the dragons which you'll get to see and then outside of heaven's ward you go to storms uh stormblood which is talking about um i can't think of it uh the retaking of uh i can't think of it but it's the retaking of like a, we'll just call it a desert colony area. So with with the uh, sand with, people. The sand. <laughs> <coughs> Welcome. <laughs> yeah right. <laughs> Would you like some sand? Um, <laughs> no, this but, is my sand. <laughs> right. Uh, but either way, um, jumping to this one, it's like a new threat. It's more of the like some of the worlds. I don't know if you actually saw the. Extent Extended trailer where they talk about some of the new areas you're going Mm-mm, to no. are like I haven't seen them put this much, much effort since uh, well since ever <laughs> the the worlds uh, the the areas look really nice uh, it's actually surprising I'm like wow dude there's I'm supposed to I can run it I don't have any problem running it but it's just a matter of like dang man that's why this isn't on PS what <laughs> what <laughs> you're fucking okay you're. <laughs> Okay, your video freezes a lot, so we, we'll, oh. we'll we'll work on that. But your video froze Black when you when, your video froze on you doing this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's the fucking thumbnail, boys. <laughs> but uh, no, there's a lot of stuff going on. Obviously, new jobs coming out: the Gunbreaker yeah. and the Dancer. Um, actually, people are upset that there's no healer. Isn't um, the the Dancer is a utility support? Range DPS. Physical. Nani? Weird. Yeah, but they use the chakrams. So we'll Fuck, see am I going to millie rock on every block and do damage? So Take some this, Bahamut! <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Go down! <laughs> Freaking Talim over Dude, here. Fortnite's <laughs> taking over, man. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like not... Um, I mean, there's going to be a lot of rebalancing. I played Dragoon. I've played Dragoon since the start. Um, and I feel like they don't get enough love, to be honest. People, what's hilarious is you might, you were probably around for this. Ironically, uh, the lol dragoon uh, phase where dragoons would pull too much hate in Final Fantasy XI because they oh man, the yeah, all kinds of things. That's that's a thing here, but it's because dragoons die because of stun lock or uh, because of animation lock. So if I do a jump, I'm stuck for a little bit after the jump lands. And if there's a mechanic coming up, like a boss is doing an AOE, and I'm not able to get out of the way, I might get hit, might get killed. Hmm. So then the Lull Dragoon has come into here, but a lot of people don't know what it's actually from. They think it's only 14. So, I don't know. That's completely besides the point. But there's a lot of stuff going on with it. I think you should stay Ninja just to get used to it. Yeah, I yeah. I just hit 30 on Ninja. Um, it's been like two, three weeks since I played, so I'd love to give a cap right now uh, on the uh, podcast. 
as to where I'm at exactly, what mission, main mission, but um, I'll uh, I'll definitely jump on that this week, just to even check, just to fucking log in and get something. Um, so speaking of Final Fantasy, like I said, I'm doing my Final Fantasy VII playthrough right now. Um, that's typically on Sundays. It'll be after the Final Fantasy XIV stream uh, or during the week again. Follow me on Twitch. That's the best way to know. Um, big Final Fantasy VII fan, uh, favorite game. Uh, if I had to blanket it, it'd be ever. Uh, but there's games like Tactics, Devil May Cry Three, uh, uh, still three? Final Fantasy Tactics, huh? Uh, still three, even after five. Hey, even after five, Devil May Cry Three is a uh, dude. That's the only I game that I've watched, huh? I think you stand alone. I'm, I, 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 st- I stand, changed dude, on five. stream. I still watch the fucking trailer for uh, Devil May Cry Three. I, I. That game, no, dude. Good. I, JD, I stapled a review of Devil May Cry Three on my chest at in high school. Ran a Blockbuster because my parents wouldn't buy it for me, and I rented it. <laughs> um, love. That's love right there. But um, yeah, Final Fantasy VII playthrough is going really well. Uh, the Xbox One version, I'm sure it's on the Switch and PS4 as well. Uh, it can <clears throat> times three speed. If you accidentally press right stick, which my ADHD kicks fucking in like crazy, if you press the right stick in, you recover your health, MP, and get auto limit break. So super unfortunate. You can keep your achievements, which you know I'm still happy with. But it sucks when you're on stream and I press it accidentally when I'm in a boss fight and I'm using Cure. And it just, it makes you look suspect, so that kind of sucks. Um, so, something else that I want to chat about uh, that I haven't seen anything for is the Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. Um, so, <clears throat> my, own, my, my Star Wars background, specifically video games, uh, well, is KOTAR, obviously, which should be every gamer's, like, number one RPG Bioware uh, Jedi, but... Jedi Star Wars game. Bioware Jedi. Um, it's um, <laughs> fucking taglines, right? Um, and then uh, what's the other one? Battlefront was amazing. Um, Jedi Outcast. Fucking <laughs> oh! backflip. That was uh, that was the animation of a backflip. Um, yeah. And then um, help me out here. Uh, oh my gosh, what was the one with uh, Star Killer? Unleashed. Yeah, I enjoyed Unleashed a lot. So anyway, JD says he's seen a trailer. So can you give us a little background on that? Because I've not seen anything, nor do I have an opinion on it. But so the so the biggest thing about it, about what EA is trying to do with this one, is they're actually trying to turn over uh, like a new leaf. Um, you know, they've been getting a lot of bad rap, mainly to do with uh, <clears throat> like Battleborn or Battleborn. I wish rest of Battleborn um, with uh, Battlefront. Stuff like that, the DLC, uh, not the DLC, but the microtrans- uh, microtransactions, yeah, all that stuff. Oh, it's an incomplete game, this, that, and the third, whatever. Now, I've only played the first Battlefront, so I really can't speak to that. But I know the motivations going into this one are to provide a real solid experience. Now, of course, the new, um, you saw the new uh, Star Wars trailer, yes, right? Yeah. The, okay. More, more questions than answers. Yes. Right. Uh, which I mean. Good Star Wars, no Star. hope. Yep, got it. <laughs> Star Wars had no hope. Uh, no hope. Um, so uh, this one is sort of, they release one every, I believe every year they release a, a Star Wars game. Uh, or is it every two years? But either way, this is the one that's coming out. It's a single player experience where pretty much you're playing as a Jedi who's legit in, or a force sensitive person. Um, it, I'm is, sorry, is, is this, which path is this following? Is this uh, Kylo Ren? Like that, I don't. Stormtroopers are there, so okay. it's definitely post like Clone Wars, all that stuff. So it's more of the like the Empire and all that stuff, okay, for sure. But uh, you're playing as a force sensitive gentleman who is uh, <clears throat> pretty much like his, his uh, the, the monologue of it while he's doing all this stuff. It's all CG, so there's no gameplay. Um, is like, you know, don't trust anyone, don't do this, or whatever, and it's showing things of him, like, he's going to work, and then he sees, like, a stormtrooper, and he's like... <laughs> this is a fucking Jedi Sim game? I don't want to play right. Sims 3 at n- still no hope. What the he fuck? He goes swimming, you pull up the ladder, and then he's... You, you got a just... fuck it, you got a job? Yeah, right. Um, but he, all that stuff is going on, and then he's like... He's like, there is no, uh, what's it called? Or don't believe in anything. And then, like, the last thing he's like, but you can believe in the Force. And he has, like, a lightsaber. He's like, whatever. But 
<laughs> intention, uh, I feel what they're trying to pull here is a solid single player story driven experience, which should be a topic for next week because a lot yeah. of people are going, if it's not single player, I won't play it kind of thing. Well, that's name, like, I can't even name an EA game that I can remember in recent history that's like, did you did you play the single player campaign? Out. I mean, um, or did I cut out? Uh, no, forget, forgive me if I'm wrong or forgive me for not remembering. Uh, Dead Space was made by Visceral Games, the game that the company that's down, right? Like they don't exist anymore. Uh, you cut out a little bit, so all I heard was Visceral Games. Um, uh, I, I believe Visceral's not uh, uh, there anymore. I'm sure. Well, the question was uh, name an EA game that's been known for its single player experience in recent years. <sighs> so that's uh, that's the that's the unnerving part. Is uh, hey, we're a company that a lot of flack is coming from microtransactions. They, even their mobile game, they took over the Command and Conquer series, yeah. uh, that for mobile, and that game, uh, that game is not being well praised because a, it, it's like that Diablo Immortal, which we could chit chat about those. But the game, where's my direct sequel for PC? No, we're gonna put it on mobile because mobile is a very lucrative game, and I'm saying that, or the game, market, it's, yeah. yeah, market, and I'm saying that from fucking experience. My wallet hurts sometimes. Yeah, um, I mean, this one they're trying to say, hey, we're not doing that, which. You know, time will tell, but I honestly, I guess I'm a little bit more, I wouldn't say I'm anti-consumer. I just understand why developers and sometimes publishers do what they do. So to me, I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. Um, if I want it, I'll play it. If I don't want it, I won't play it. If I want it, I'll play it. And I don't, <laughs> I won't play it. Um, so speaking of the whole movie concept. So another part about this podcast that we want kind of want to throw in at the end is, uh, uh, movies, animes, uh, TV shows that we've been watching. So I'm super fucking excited. So I slept on this, right? Legit slept on this. Um, it's a movie coming out called Brightburn, uh, which is almost like a it's like a uh, a horror hero hero it's a horror super horror movie. Yeah, hey, uh. with a pun. Um, <laughs> Um, yeah, so I slept, like, I remember seeing, I was like, okay, yeah, whatever, evil Superman, that's, yeah, that's really gonna happen. I thought it was fan-made, um, so I, I didn't pay much mind to it, but then the second, uh, trailer came out, so, uh, Memorial Day weekend, I believe, uh, I'll, uh, I'll be taking a trip down to see JD, we're gonna go see it live, uh, yeah. the weekend it comes out, but I'm super fucking excited for it, so I hit up JD, and I, 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 I really just wanted to chat about this, so, like, the concept behind it, if you guys haven't seen the trailer, I recommend thoroughly going to go watch the trailer. Uh, but it, basically, it's if Superman came down and he was picked on to the point where, fuck it, I don't want to be good. Uh, the parents are, you know, it's not like Texas Chainsaw where the parents are manipulating the kid. Uh, they know that he's different. They know that there's something special about him and they're trying to steer him in the right direction. But there's just something inside of him calling to him on top of, you know... Classic scenes of a high school where the kid gets, you know, uh, the main character, the we're gonna, at this point we're gonna call him Brightburn, gets knocked down, and then he, uh, people are like, hey, why don't you uh, get up, get up, get up, and then someone goes to reach for a hand, and they're like, no, don't pick up the weirdo, and he goes to, and the teacher's like, grab, grab his hand, help him up. He grabs the hand of the girl, and she, the girl starts crying because you can hear the bones cracking in her hand. Um, I'm super, super excited for it. And, just crying, uh, not even. Uh, no, she like, bones. Yeah, bones are cracking. He's like, my he's, mind. he's breaking my, <laughs> my fingertips. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. I give this sh four thumbs down. Um. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> um. Yeah. So I'm. I'm really excited for it. I mean, me and JD. Me. I mean, I wouldn't call us the biggest superhero nerds of the Marvel and DC. I think we know enough to know the storyline. So, I mean, your perspective, JD, on an evil Superman movie, you know what I mean? I think we've had the comics before, so it's, <clears throat> I guess, interesting. Like, I don't know if Red Sun is, is, is evil. You know, it's the Russian Superman, I believe, or it's the communist Superman. Mm. Either way, there's a, Chi there's a Chinese Superman, and then there's a Russian Superman. I think Red Sun is the Russian one. I don't know if he's evil, because then that's just a matter of opinion or whatever. Uh -huh. But even if you're going into something like Injustice, Superman has never been more interesting <laughs> until he's been evil. and uh, Yeah, vulnerable. I mean, yeah, it's just true. I mean, he's it's been, no offense. Yeah, no, not uh, he's been dipped in to be the good guy so much. Uh, uh, what extent, you know? Yeah, so it's, it's oh, like you're... cool to see Oh, what that. a shitty background. You're super strong and have heat laser vision and can fly wherever you want to. 
That sucks. Right, yeah. Broken family, all he needs is white hair, he's good to go. But Dante. <laughs> all that in mind <laughs> is interesting because, you know, wifey Elizabeth Banks is in it, so of course I gotta check it out. But at the same time, <laughs> gotta plug that in there. Just gotta plug that in there in case she comes <laughs> strolling on in. I'm gonna like this video. <laughs> Who that? Who that? Oh, that JD. <laughs> right. I'm gonna follow that scream. <laughs> anyway, but with all that being said, though, it's it's interesting because he's a kid. You know, kid. The, the oh, what is? I it mean, look at the parallel. Right, right, so you know, five nights, par- five nights at Freddy's when yeah. they talk about the um. Uh, What's it called? What what often occurs behind closed doors is misinterpreted by a child, sort of thing. Yep, like yep. I don't know if you ever heard. That's that same thing. Like he might interpret what's good and evil. He might be trying to be good, but what he interprets as evil is not exactly yeah. evil, or something like that. Like there's a there's a great level of potential. I don't know if the film's gonna do it. I know, man. You bring up a great point too. I never even considered is yeah. I really hope they don't go with the trope of. Like mom and dad are really, really nice and and positive and reinforcing and teach him mom well. Is at least. But then, but then when he goes to school and he gets picked on once, he's like, "Fuck it, laser vision." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. You, know, you, bring, you bring up a great point, man. That that would, I think, that would do the film disservice. And that's the thing too; it's a great parallel. Right now, Shazam's out, and that movie's about a child un- unlocking his potential. Um, you know. I've seen the movie and I don't want to spoil anything, but the I heard Zachary uh, Levy Levi Zachary Levi, Levi, the guy that plays Flynn and he's Chuck. Oh, ah, yeah, he's Chuck. I never watched Chuck though, but I know he's uh, Flynn from Tangled because Tangled is my shit. <laughs> but I heard he did a good job, so that's cool. um, yeah, that's. I mean, we could talk. We could chat about that next week. I disagree. I'm not a fan of the defense of. Well, how is a adult actor supposed to act as a child actor pretending to be an adult actor? I, I, I the acting in that movie was not not something that I was super pumped for. Um, hey man, but uh, <laughs> spoiler, it spoiler, spoiler super super spoiler. Megan Good's in it, and uh, oh anyway, yeah, that's. Oh. I think there's another spoiler to that, which I got spoiled on about another. Uh... Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Megan Good's but, in the movie. That's great. Yeah, she's hot as fuck. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so um, anyway, Brightburn um, Memorial Day weekend. So definitely uh, go check that out. So I've got a black friend. No, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, so um, so last bit of information I want to chit chat about. Um, I didn't get to watch it today. Probably watch it at the end of this week. But One Punch Man uh, Season 2, Episode 1 dropped on Hulu. Check that out. Uh, has a completely different um, uh, art design. Studio. Yeah, art, new studio. Uh, which, I mean, honestly, uh, uh, JD, I know you haven't seen the first episode of the second season yet. I saw the trailer and I was yeah, just Yeah, like... dude. Oh, man. The, 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 nothing changed from the trailer. Everything from the trailer mimics what's in the story. They didn't like, oh, hey, we need to redo the graphics. Um um, it's, it's okay. Compare, if you sit and compare it to season one, you're going to have a bad time. So, um, uh, it, it's South hard to Park compare TV. to the first episode of One Punch Man. On yeah. top of that, One Punch Man doesn't even have a strong MC characterized story, uh, storyline to base off of. So it's supposed to start now is the issue. Uh, it's the, uh, so again, you need to watch it, but there, uh, there's a, a star, a side quest that was in the main, uh, that was in there was a side quest in season one that I believe is going to be the main storyline. I have not read the manga, um, so yeah. I, I'm not foreshadowing. I am I am a sub of sub only. <laughs> that sounded really fucking bad. Um, but uh, Dom here, what's up? <laughs> Get that troika. <laughs> Um, I got layers. I got layers. It, man. Oh man! Any <laughs> any gal players out there? Um, so uh, One Punch Man, really good. I just got a black clover tattoo on my kneecap. Um, really. Show it off. Uh, I can't. I'll show it off on the next video. I can't because I'm not. I'm literally there's anyway. Um, uh, black clover. Uh, caught up. I'm all caught up. Uh, on seasons of that amazing show. If you watch it, I definitely prefer uh, the dub over the sub. Um, specific because of the screaming. Asta screaming is it, he stops it, like after like episode yes, three. But yeah, I it does. The dub it, too. It, it it again. I watched the dub, but um, which the dub follows the sub, so it's not like the subs ahead of it. Uh, they're at the yeah. exact same time. Um, Simon Cass, yeah. Uh, so is there? So anyway, uh, and then Baruto. 
uh, which uh, to this point I'll bring it up. I'll bring it up every week until I change my, until it changed my mind. Uh, I'm super disappointed in it. Uh, I'm a huge Naruto fan. If you haven't noticed, um, I cannot do any more filler, dude. I can't. I did enough for Naruto. I can't do it for his fucking son. You're only hurting yourself at that point, dude. <laughs> Even I, the misses. I, I've been like, why are you guys watching filler? I I, I, okay, I so, care so much so, about no, yeah. And Naruto, and Naruto, it's in Naruto. It was this. You got to see the backstory, but now you know the backstory. Like, uh, I know Baruto, Baruto is Hinata and Naruto's offspring. What? There's no hardships. Uh, he just wants to be different. His, like, I, I know the backstory already, and that's the that's the deciding factor. In Naruto, you're like, oh fuck, let me let me hear about Neji's background because you don't know. But now you know the kids growing up, so now the diversity isn't there. You don't. I don't see any benefit. Um. Anyway. Yeah room to sort of stretch yeah yeah exactly yeah so like i really could I, I, we're watching bardo consistently because we love the show um but uh so there's a anime that you mentioned jd the demon slayer kimetsu no yaiba if I, i'm terrible at my japanese speaking uh, so yeah, you mentioned that briefly but what is that so uh it's pretty much this this uh anime it actually just came out recently it's on the second episode it's doing the sami cast too just like bardo and uh like my hero when it was out Wait, no, my hero wasn't a summon cast, but it's it's like that. Was it <laughs> no, um, it didn't summon cast the dub and the sub. Okay. The dub was behind like a couple episodes. Yep. Which is why I stopped eventually watching and just read the manga instead. But uh, hey man, I'm all caught up. I know what's Betrayal. going on. <laughs> Betrayal, all those fucking man. memes you send me with the what? you haven't sent me in person, but every time I see him, I think of you now. Which ones? Well, that's like that uh, you're an anime watcher and you watch it on uh. You watch oh, it on TV and wait for the episode's release, <laughs> and then they show, oh, oh, like, the Mangarita comes in, and he's like, oh, you're not there yet? <laughs> Peasant. <laughs> well, I mean, I only... Oh, you mean that main character? Let me just spoil it. <laughs> JD hasn't done that. He, he, JD, JD's good about that. Oh, dude, I would hate myself before you hate me if I spoiled anything. <laughs> um, like, how could I? So, uh, it, anyway. Demon so, Slayer is a series or a movie? What is it? So, it's actually off of Shonen Jump. So you know it's going places. It's shown in, okay. So we got <laughs> MC plot armor. All right. <laughs> so pretty much the whole point behind it is, uh, dude is working like bare less than minimum wage, and I think it's like nineteen like fifties like Japan or something like that or whatever. Um, it's one of the area, uh, one of the eras which I'm awful at. I'm trying to get better at. And uh, pretty much what happens is he comes back home. Demons killed his whole family. Uh, his sister is alive, but is also a demon. And he's like, fuck, I love my sister. I'm going to try and get her to not be a demon. Game of Thrones shout out right there. Yeah. During this time, he's like, all right, hey, I'm going to be become a swordsman and slay the demons that killed my family and try and figure out how to rescue my sister at the same time. Meets a couple other people. It's, it's interesting. It's got the balance of comedy mixed in with some pretty dark shit like if you look at the first like the trailer on it dude you see literally it's piles of dead bodies like this one dude that's like Ugh, like dead like that and just like looking at him and stuff i'm like damn this shit's powerful <laughs> and then so it's like berserker <laughs> no it's bloody it's no because well it's, it's bloody but it's not berserker okay uh, berserk it's not yeah berserk. i'm sorry berserker berserk <laughs> is sorry. like i didn't think they really joke like no, they joke. There's levity, but they don't joke in the sense of like, <laughs> <laughs> hamburger. But in the trailer, there's legit like anime faces, like your typical Naruto bleach, sort of yeah. like anime faces kind of thing. But uh, it's it's okay. interesting. I had no I, idea that I had no idea it was shonen, and I'm I'm biased too. I mean, we'll get. Well, into I mean, it. all the stuff you watch is shonen. You mean like shonen jump in that regard? Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, they they didn't add on it way back when. I only remember because he has a uh, birthmark like right here on his head. And so he's got he's like from the, he's from the Fire Nation. <laughs> it's more like Harry Potter because it doesn't really go. Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Is that what? It's. What? It's it's like right here. It's so. Right. <laughs> it's By order. It's Belgian, mate. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, so I, I, every time we do that voice and we extend it, I always feel like we're just in Fable, like the first Fable. 
I feel like grassles. Huh? <laughs> I just feel like grassles. <laughs> the people, like, there's some dude from, like, Great Britain. I don't talk like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't talk like that. Listen yeah. here, you fucking putts. I'll just subscribe. <laughs> like, that's, that's Oh, I'm right. American. <laughs> oh, 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 cars. <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, hamburgers, machine guns. <laughs> I like to eat it and out. <laughs> Bulls. <laughs> My bitch, McDonald's. <laughs> uh, all right, this got too far. Okay, uh, that's good. That's good. The, the other enemy is, um, I believe it's the the Rising of the Shield Hero. Okay. Um. So I like I read manga, manga. Um. But I don't. It's it takes forever for me to get into something that's like cool or whatever. I like the abstract stuff. I usually like more mature stuff. Like if if they're gonna kill off a character like super quick, like zombie related or something like that, I'm like, sign me up. But if it's something where it's just like pure shonen, I'm like, eh. but from what I've heard, thanks to good old roommate, um, it's actually a pretty good series. Um, so he's actually watching through it, and I've seen, you know, I'm like cooking or whatever, right? You know, just cooking. And then um, he's, you know, living room's right over there. So I've caught glimpses of it. I'm like, yeah, animation's not bad. I respect it. I think it has a little bit of 3D in it, though. So I'm like, eh. uh, It's like the same yeah. thing like like Goblin Slayer had yeah, it. Yeah, Goblin Slayer. Yeah. Had it to where it was just like, there were select scenes where they did it. Personally, I think Goblin Slayer, much like, um, and I could be wrong about Shield Hero, but uh, should have just went the one one punch sort of way where it's like let's just kill it with animation it's yeah like one punch has some of the best animation like one like, punch man so much people, emotion you know what i mean people say like afro samurai i think is that the same yes. studio i think but i don't think afro samurai had like the best animation but afro, i okay. think one punch was better because it's it's about here's oh, man, the thing it's about being able to to clearly define the action of the character like from a from choreography standpoint like if we watch if i watch resident evil uh, 2 or whatever you know the scene where um the movie you know where alice is fighting nemesis the mm -hmm. amount of jump cuts makes me want to like die and then you jump to like the raid 2 the kitchen scene, oh yeah where both, both of them are fighting and it's like we have a static camera yeah we're showing what's Pan going shot on. for like you... 40 seconds you know what's going on. Yeah. There's an importance in the chore choreography. So I feel that same way in relation to those two. Like, One Punch has a really crazy camera, but I can keep up with it. I just and... feel like One Punch Man has a lot of uh, uh, visual effects, like in colors, like the way the Thunderbolts are, that I would rather compare Sam uh, uh, Samurai Shampoo. What, Samurai Shampoo. Samurai Shampoo yeah. or, um, uh, oh my gosh, help me out here, uh, Spike. Cowboy Bebop. Oh, Cowboy Bebop, yeah. Like that. I think that was the same. No, like, it wasn't. I don't know anyway. if it was the same, but for Afro Samurai, uh, the visuals match a little bit more. Like Samurai Shampoo can't had great fight scenes, but they couldn't. It couldn't really hold a it's candle. Amazing music. Amazing. Oh man. Well, yeah. That was that. That really brought the lofi, uh, like hip hop kind of like. This new Jabez, man. Dude, yeah. <laughs> God rest his soul. <laughs> um, Jabez is the boy. Uh, but like, yeah, good. I mean, good parallel to bring up. But I, I just feel like comparison to like some like One Punch Man with the animation, like even just the fights with uh, Genos and uh, uh, Saitama, when, like that when alone. Genos fight the Sea King, is, fought the Sea King. That was hype. I did, yeah, because he's like, he's like, oh, I can't even save anyone. He's got one arm, and then he's like, I'm gonna kill all the humans, and he just goes. He yeah, dude. His eyes light up. I was like, yeah. I, I, plot armor or not, uh, Genos would have. Genos could be an MC in his own show, because um, he 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 always has the power of I can't give up. More heart, more heart than yeah. strength. Like that's my true power is my strength. Sight or my heart is my true power. Saitama's like, fuck it. You're it's fate on sight, regardless of who you are. And you're gonna. It's, it's easy sight. clap. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, all right, well, we've been going for like an hour strong, man, and uh, this is our first podcast. Uh, this is definitely something that we want to do weekly. Um, hopefully, it gets uploaded by – it's by the way that my time management is today. It's not going to be uploaded till tomorrow, uh, Monday, uh, April 15th, but uh, we definitely want to do this week by week. I'll get better with my time. Uh, if this is just a taste of the conversations that we have, I'm trying to limit these – 
uh, blocks of information into 15 to 20 minute time segments uh, just so that we can keep up a conversation but like Bloodborne we could talk about Bloodborne longer we barely scratched the surface on two animes and I barely talked about Baruto I talk, didn't even mention any of the tattoos we didn't meant uh, so many things so uh, if you guys enjoyed this uh, definitely leave a like uh, put a comment down there eventually if this catches on I'd love an AMA between me and JD um uh, let me know what you guys want us to uh, talk about in the next week uh, if we don't come up with conversations ourselves, or maybe you want us to not talk about anime as much or hey take away uh, the more video games we want to know more about the TV shows you guys watch um, in any case uh, hopefully uh, next week we can get uh, we can get on a consistent basis this is the first one JD man I appreciate you dude yeah handshake <laughs> no it's over here Wait, uh, my head. Uh, there we go. <laughs> okay, my bad. My, my bad, dog. <laughs> get out of here. I got out of here. Did you get it, Mom? Okay. Um, so like I said, guys, thank you guys very much. Like, comment, subscribe. Holler at your boy. I don't have a good outro. What does this button do when I press it?